you haven't already, go ahead and log in to Typeform. If it's your first time using Typeform, then this will be the screen you'll see. This is your workspace, and this is where all your Typeforms will live. To create your first Typeform, we're going to click on New Typeform. From here, you can explore the different templates they have, or you can start from scratch building your own. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll start from scratch. Once you hit that button, you'll be prompted to name your Typeform. You can choose what kind of type form you're creating. I'll go ahead and choose an application form, and you can also choose what it's for. And then when you're done, click continue. This is where you'll build out your first type form. You'll see over here, it says add your first question. And while it lists different question types, it also contains a welcome screen and a thank you screen. I recommend always starting with a welcome screen so you can let your users know what the purpose is for this type form. So I'll go ahead and add some quick text and you can add a image. I'm going to upload a logo. So now we're ready to add our first question. Typeform gives you a lot of different questions that you can ask. And if you go through here, you can see an example of what each question is intended for and you can learn more about how to use that question type. I'm going to start with a short text question type, which is good for things like asking people what their name is. So I'm going to type in my first question. Hi, what's your name? And I'm going to hit this question settings icon and I'm going to make this required. So now I'm going to add a statement question type, which isn't a question, but it's a good way to acknowledge your audience. So I'm going to say, thanks for your interest in the MakerPad Expert Network. Now I want to collect the, their email address. And I want to make this required as well. And now I need to know what tools they are an expert in. So I'm going to do a multiple choice question type and say, what tools are you an expert in? I'll list out my choices. And I'm going to make this required and I'm going to allow people to use, um, to select multiple options and make it an unlimited selection. So now I'm going to select a long text question type and I might ask something like, tell us about the coolest no code project you ever did. And I'm going to set the max amount of characters to be 300. Now I'm going to add a number field and I'm going to ask um, what is your hourly rate and make this required. And finally, I think I will add a, another statement that says thanks, we'll be in touch, and I'll change the button text to say submit. So now you should have a good feel for the different types of questions you can ask. I obviously didn't use all of them, but I would definitely take time to go through and see um, what different question types there are and read these little blurbs about the intent of each one. So one thing we can do now that we have everything set up is we can recall information. So if you want to reference people's name, uh, let's say in your statement, instead of saying thanks for your interest, I could say thanks, uh, Amy, for your interest in the MakerPad Expert Network. To do this, on the question you want to have recall information in, you would just simply uh, click in to the settings and then on the recall information, click add. And from here, you can recall the name, except I want this to be here. There we go. One thing to note about recall information is that you can't recall information from multiple choice or picture choice question types. So for example, if you go to what tools are you an expert in, 
It's a multiple choice question, and if you click recall information, nothing happens. However, let's say I want to add in a question here, and it's going to be a yes, no question that says, um, are you flexible on, and then I'm going to recall information and it's not showing, but recall um, question number five. So ideally it says, are you flexible on your hourly rate? So once you're done setting up your questionnaire, you can view it. So start. And you'll see it says, thanks, Amy. Click continue. I'll put in my test email. I'm an expert in Airtable. Click OK. Uh, this tutorial. Click OK. Um, say zero. And then are you flexible on zero? Uh, no. And now it's I'll hit submit. So let's go back real quick, and you'll notice that it just said here, um, zero. So I'm just going to add a dollar sign. And now when I go to preview it, let's see, I'll quickly go through this. And now you'll see it says, are you flexible on zero dollars? No. And submit. So if everything is set up, you can go ahead and click Publish. As you'll see, nothing has happened. So now we need to share our type form. So hop on over to the Share tab. And from here, you can share your type form with this link here, or you can embed it into a website. You can either embed it within a page or you can take up a full page or you can create a pop-up. You can style it and you can make it seamless so that it kind of overlays and uh, matches your website where you're going to be embedding this. And once you're ready, you're going to hit get the code and then you would simply copy and paste this into a embed widget on a website of your choice. Once you've embedded your website, you obviously want a way to see the results. So you can see that here under responses, or you can connect it to a Google Sheet by going to the Connect uh, tab. And then when you see Google Sheets here, you would simply select Connect. You would log into your Google account. allow access. I'm going to create a new sheet that says Makerpad application. And then click activate integration. Now I can open up my Google Sheet and start seeing my responses here. So this has been a quick walkthrough on the basics of Typeform. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out in the MakerPad community. Thanks for watching.